Hi guys, this is Mick from FS4 Whipport, and we are taking a look at good old FS4 tonight. Um, doing a first in a series of videos using the new Screenomatic Pro version 2.0 and a digital headset microphone for clarity. Um, now here we're running a flight simulator for FS4 in DOSBox, 0.74. Um, we are running it with an aspect true option in the DOSBot config file and uh, running uh, FS4 at 640 by 400. So the aspect true is really important because it corrects the squished view that you get if you do not have that option on and it shows you what uh, FS4 used to look like on a CRT display because back in the old days we used to stretch out our monitors to fill the whole screen and in doing so we rounded out our gauges which otherwise uh, if we left the vertical completely squashed down it would look rather egg-like and that is the way it's usually presented and it's a default view in DOSBox so this is a really good because it uh, gives you the correct look and feel so when you first come into uh, FS4 within DOSBox, there's a couple of things you have to do. First off, the program will start out at about 3,000 cycles, uh, so we want to up that. But before we do that, let's stop the flickering you see on the screen there. So just go to, it brings up the second menu item, then we go E, and we select one twice, that's no flicker, and then two for image complexity to complex. And then we return to the simulator. One other little housekeeping duty we're doing is we are going to go to K and bring down the sound a little here to four. Okay, so that's a little more palatable. Now if we cycle our views here, we can see that uh, Prop is kind of not moving all very good where it should be, and I just know where it should be because I've used this darn thing for years and years and years. So I'm going to bring this up with Control F12, which is a DOSBox function, and I'm going to bring this up to about 8,000, so I'll just keep it there. And we are about ready to go now. So we'll just take a little look around here. Oh, there's one other thing. Notice how the aileron, my right aileron is up, and left aileron is down. It looks like my elevator is up. So I need to calibrate. So just hit K. That will calibrate your flight stick. I am using a Logitech Extreme Pro. Um, when you are using DOSBox, uh, you're best to stay with a USB joystick. I have tried to use uh, the Joybox converter. Let's use old analog sticks. Mm -mm. I find I have problems, at least in FS4 with it. Um, creates a lot of weird problems. So uh, go with a USB joystick. Uh, CH Products is making the uh, USB version of their old Pro flight stick. You can buy one of those, or, or this Logitech is perfectly adequate. Um, there's actually not that many joysticks on the market anymore, oddly. So anyways, uh, let's get ready to go here. Just cycle around through our views, and throttle up a little bit. Throttle up for taxi. Zoom out. And there we go. Now I can use my joystick like I'm using now to control the aircraft. You know, if you want to use real pilot talk, they like to say ship, to control the ship. Or I can use my keypad. The enter key and the zero will also control the rudder pedals. but not so much when the joystick is connected. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I should really put in... Uh, looks like I'm zipping along here a little fast, so... Hit the brakes a little bit here. Hopefully I won't stop. 
come on up to the end of the runway here, make my turn. Try to stop short of the active runway, just like a real pilot. <laughs> real simulator pilot. We are at LVK today. This is uh, my default start. Uh, this is your basic uh, F1 scenery file, which was the default underlying scenery file, and it has a, a custom built-in scenery on top of it, an SC1 file, uh, which is a user-created file created by yours truly. And yes, it is colorful. The Flight Simulator had 16 colors. And uh, you can change them with a little-known driver, but uh, 16 colors, uh, once you get used to them, perfectly adequate, especially in the evening and at night, which is when the simulator actually looks best. So, take a look, quick look that way, nothing coming, quick look this way, getting back of our aircraft again, get back inside, come back out of the active runway, time to go. program is very much a toolbox. If you like a building type program, construction kit type thing, you will love FS4 with all its goodies. Full throttle. Tower view. And a little vision. Off we go. And all these uh, objects here, those were created with a first add-on. Those particular hangars were made with a much later add-on. Um, first, uh, FS4 came out as... Um, that's a middle marker indicator. You're hearing that? I'll go off in a second. I'll kind of get off the approach line here. FS4 came out as uh, 1989, the basic program, and then they came out with the uh, first add-on, which was to create scenery. It's called ASD, or Aircraft Scenery Designer. After that, they came out with a SGA, Sound Graphics Aircraft Upgrade, which gave FS4 sound. And then uh, a little further on, and Aircraft Adventure Factory a number of add-ons. This particular version that I'm flying here today uh, has everything on it. It's my special custom version, which I call uh, FS4 MIC, which you can get at planetmic.com forward slash FS4. Throttling down a little bit here. So this is just basically the Livermore Valley with some scenery built on top of it. Uh, Livermore is about 50 miles east of San Francisco, for you, those of you who don't know where LVK is. I used to live there a million years ago. And um, I've been pretty much using FS4 since um, 1990, so... 26 years now? <laughs> yes, I do have newer flight simulations, but uh, FS4 was always kind of like my killer app. And uh, really like the construction aspects of it. You can fly in and build scenery anywhere on the fly, which is a really cool little aspect to the game. Oddly, this uh, simple polygon scenery is very memorable. So I built everything you pretty much see in here, the mountains, and the little lake in the distance is Del Val Reservoir. I have a little active scenery, or you know, dynamic scenery file that goes with that. There's a little feel off in the distance here, which maybe we'll try to get into. Throttle down, trim a little bit. 
Um, it's Meadowlark Field, which was a little pri private runway in the Livermore Valley. I had uh, stuck this in because I used it for a little adventure I wrote. Maybe we can try to run that afterwards, but... Um, coming in here pretty hot if we're going to try to land here, and I think the altitude of this field is about 700 feet. So let me see if I can bleed off some speed here. And some altitude, of course. I'm going to put on my landing analysis, so I go one, two, one. Yes, I'm using a full keyboard with a keypad, or back when FS4 was new, that was known as a 101 keyboard. It had 101 keys. I'm on a nice little approach now. Little to the right of the runway, as you can see. A little hot, too. Probably overcorrecting a little there. I'm in coordinated flight here, so it makes it a little trickier. I'm not using my rudder independently. I just have the single joystick. Here we are down. And once we come to a full stop, Kill my throttle completely. Full stop. We'll get a little landing analysis. So 275. So that's actually a pretty nice little landing. We can take a look at my landing by hitting one now and going into instant replay, which is G. You can see it's very much a toolkit. This whole thing has got so many little things you can tweak around with. It'll keep you amazed and amused, most amused and amazed for hours. Not to mention the whole building aspect. Which I'll show you if we have a little time here. I don't want this to go too long. So we'll hit escape now. It lets us review it. I notice when I uh, go into review, I sometimes get this little hiss in the background, which you probably hear. Oh, that's something that uh, DOSBox is doing, or maybe screen Omatic's doing. It seems to only have it on the replay. It's nice to be able to go back and uh, check out your uh, your landing. Now we just switched over to night view. Uh, that this is evening view. I'm just gonna back this back a little bit. Oops. Back to daylight. Yeah. So see, at five o'clock in the evening, it switches to this uh, dusk coloration, which is actually quite nice. I actually like that, but. Uh, just looking at the shadow and everything coming in now, we probably want to keep it in day mode here. I think there's actually a, just a grass field here, and of course, in my version, it's paved and has a building. I like the shadow effect, that looks good. There we are. Very nice. A very nice landing, wasn't it? Okay, let's get out of this. So we just go space to return to the simulator. And uh, we'll pause as you can see here. And back in the cockpit. And here we go. So we're just going to turn around here and fly right back out. Actually, this thing's already like 14 minutes, so I think I'm just going to turn off the uh, runway here and park here and stop. Come up to this little building here. This, uh, like I said, is featured in a little adventure I wrote when I first started fooling around with the adventure module. I don't think I showed you the uh, 
the map view before I go I just show you where we are because there is a nice map view you could take a look at. I uh, usually get at it by hitting the num key, but again in DOSBox it kind of acts a little hinky. So here's our map view, which we can actually move around and zoom in, zoom out. So this is pretty cool. We have this onboard map here. Alright, so uh, that's the uh, first video, and I hope you enjoyed it, guys, and hope you found it maybe a little interesting if you're trying to run FS4 yourself. Uh, I'm running it in 640 by 400 mode here, and Aspect True is on in the DOSBox config, and that's why it looks so nice, and the gauges are round like they should be, like they were in a good old CRT. So that's all for now. I'll kill my engine. And say goodbye from Meadowlark Field.